my climbing gear was stolen over the weekend. My shoes, my chalk bag, basically everything I use nearly every day to climb. There's one thing they didn't steal, which I am thankful for, and I'll talk a little bit about that at the end of the video. Uh, stay tuned for that, I guess. Climbing makes me really happy. In fact, it's one of the only things in my life that will make me happy consistently, always. Even when I have a bad day at the climbing gym, the day as a whole is made better by climbing. And recently, all of that was taken from me, and I'm a little bit shook by it, I will say. Now, this video will probably just be me trying to come to terms with this violation. Uh, it might be very boring for you, but hopefully, if anything, you'll feel closer to a fellow climber, unity, or something like that. Last week was already a bad week. Uh, work was unexpectedly bad, meaning late nights and packed days. I couldn't get to the climbing gym like I normally do. I generally try to climb five to six days per week, even if only for 20 minutes a day. I try to get there at least a little bit. But over the last week, my routine was reduced to just two days. And those two days were short sessions. So basically, every day left me kind of defeated. And every morning, I awoke pessimistic and still kind of defeated from the previous day. Last week felt like being held underwater, you know? But there was one shining light at the end of the week. I was going to see one of my favorite bands play, uh, Crosses. I'd follow Chino Moreno, the, the lead for Crosses, anywhere. He fronts my favorite band of all time, Deftones, and one of his side projects, Team Sleep, is in constant rotation at my house. So this weekend concert was to be the flicker of energy that I would need to feed the rest of my week and prime me for Monday morning. And the concert was great, very great. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't keep out thoughts of my crappy work week, so the entire show was tainted a bit with reminders of what I'm surely going to walk back into on Monday. But when viewed in isolation, the concert was amazing. Genuinely one of the best shows I've ever seen. Now, for better and for worse, uh, I'm a big believer in associated memories like this. Events can become entangled in our memories, making them relate to one another in ways both positive and negative. Uh, a positive entanglement example, uh, when I go on vacation, I tend to play just a single video game during that entire vacation. Then later, when I play that game again, I think of the vacation. It's a way to sort of allow me to vacation again, in a way. But this entanglement idea can be bad. Uh, now, when I listen to Crosses, I'll probably think of crappy work experiences. Now, time will untangle those memories, but it will take a while, I think. So what does all this have to do with climbing? Well, following the Crosses show, uh, I walked back to my car. It was a long walk in the dark through downtown Kansas City. And when I arrived at my car, I discovered that the rear window had been smashed in. And what did the thieves take? My climbing gear. My crappy week had tainted this concert that should have rescued me, and now the other thing I was counting on to pull me out of the spiral throughout the rest of the next week, climbing, that had also been taken from me. My assumption is that the thieves saw the climbing shoes through the window and thought they must be expensive sneakers or something, and they just went for them. Unbeknownst to them, climbing shoes aren't easily resellable. Feet sizes and shapes are so unique that finding a buyer for used climbing shoes isn't easy. <laughs> My shoes probably ended up in a nearby ditch when the thieves realized that they'd stolen unsellable goods. They're probably covered in mud and sewage runoff as I speak right now. That's sad. <laughs> so these thieves literally stole happiness from me, and they did so without any way to benefit themselves. They won't make any money from that theft. What they did was they just stole my entire climbing caddy. So they just they grabbed the caddy and ran with it. So in addition to the two pair of shoes that I had clipped to that caddy, they also stole a chalk bag, carabiners, a sandbar tool, a laser pointer, a cell phone tripod, a mini fan, and two hold brushes. Altogether, they stole gear that will cost me about $500 to replace. And to them, it's worthless. But to me, it was happiness. I can't climb anymore. So what do I do now? I spoke with my insurance company. I might get the window repair paid for, which is great, uh, but the climbing gear is most likely below my deductible, so I'm going to have to repurchase all of the $500 worth of gear. Hello? Hi, I've started that process already, but in doing so, I've run into some I'll say interesting psychological quandaries, just the sort of quandaries that I actually like talking about a lot on this channel. So if you're still with me, 
Yay, uh, we should be best friends. So if I put on my silver lining glasses, I could look at this situation as an opportunity to upgrade my gear. You know, I've had enough time with my climbing gear that I should know if there are problems. And if I have problems with them, I could upgrade to eliminate those problems. But I fear that changed gear would only emphasize the theft. Every time I see those new shoes, I'd be reminded of the terrible, selfish people who stole my gear. I don't want to live in that headspace. Instead, I've attempted to buy the exact same items I had previously, rather than go for variations, even if newer, better variations have been released since my original purchases. I feel that maybe if I can blur the timelines, you know, the before theft with the after theft, then maybe the theft itself might be easier to forget. I did find the exact same shower caddy. So, you know, step one, I guess, taken care of. You'd be surprised at how hard it is to find a shower caddy that would do exactly what I had built the previous one to do. These holes were the perfect sizes for the little, for the little elastic strap and, and, and the, the length, perfect size for shoes. And this little part here, perfect width for clipping on a carabiner and hanging things. It's, it's not easy. There's a lot of variations in shower caddies. But the unfortunate truth is that every time I grab my climbing caddy, I will be reminded of the theft. Every time I put on my shoes or chalk up my hands, I'll be reminded of the awful week at work that corrupted a favorite band that robbed me of my happiness. Where before climbing would fill me with joy, now I'm a little worried uh, that there isn't room for joy anymore. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm worried I'll never love climbing again. Now, I, I think with time that worry will go away, for sure. Uh, I just gotta give it time and that's hard to do. But I do try to have a silver lining about things. My hope is that time will wash away the emotional filth and that someday I will be able to put on my climbing shoes without giving garbage people space in my head. Now that time probably won't come for several weeks at least because I have brand new shoes that I have to break in. It's gonna be hard to think about anything but new shoes and these associated memories when I'm cooking up blisters on my toes. Wish me luck on that. Final silver lining piece. The thing I mentioned earlier that the thieves didn't steal. They didn't steal one important piece of climbing gear, my climbing journal. Uh, since August of 2023, which is about seven months after I started climbing, I've kept a journal to document conversations and exchanges I've had with fellow climbers. See, I'm not great with talking to strangers. Uh, so back in August, I made a conscious effort to engage more with strangers at the climbing gym. In this book, it, it tracks my progress with that. I, I've titled the journal Send Ship. <laughs> Pretty good, huh? Uh, and had I lost this, I'd be probably in a much worse place. Uh, and maybe one day I'll do a full video on this journal and what types of things I document. Let me know if you'd be interested in that. And above all, thank you so much for enduring this weird little emotional release session. Um, I'm not smart enough to, to call this therapy. I don't know what really constitutes therapy, but it feels like this video maybe is some sort of therapy. Talking out loud about the thing that I had been through hopefully makes that thing um, have a little less control over me now that I've actually like defined it and, and made it real, made it almost tangible. If words can be tangible, I don't know, I'm rambling now. Thank you so much for listening to me. I really, really do appreciate it.